This is Chris Johnson, shooting for Theromatic in Detroit, Michigan. Well, I actually come from a musical family. Uh, my dad's a bass player and, uh, you know, played with a lot of groups when he was in high school. And my uncle was a keyboard player. My uncle worked with Brothers Johnson, with Quincy Jones, a little bit of uh, work with Miles Davis. But I actually didn't grow up around it like that because they weren't really playing when I was coming up. So it's in my blood, but I just kind of, it's kind of ordinary the way I started. I was playing in elementary school, playing in fifth grade band, just kind of picked up the instrument, everybody had to do it. And then it wasn't until I got to high school that I got really serious about it. Um, kind of the pivotal moment for me was um, I'm playing in the marching band and my band director, Damian Crutcher, kind of saw that I wasn't really on my part. And so one day he just came in, he just starts yelling at the trumpets. He's like, Johnson, I see you back there. You don't know your part. You don't know what you're doing. And I see you. And I got so nervous that, you know, that I was going to get called out again, that I started practicing and then I got better. So I went from being the second to last trumpet player in the marching band to being the third trumpet player in the whole school. And so I kind of realized, okay, yeah, I have a talent for this. And so that actually came first. And then later on, I started really kind of diving into different recordings and listening to, you know, like I went to the Detroit Jazz Festival and saw some great musicians there, started listening to Miles Davis, started listening to different musicians. Um, but yeah, fear. <laughs> I first started because of fear. Yeah, throughout college, um, you know, I was hired a lot as a sideman playing with different people, but I always had my own group. So I started getting really serious about writing music. So with my own band, I was always focusing on writing original music and playing that. Um, and then it was after college when I got picked up by the Count Basie Orchestra. And that's when I started touring. So I started touring with them. And I've been with that group for about, you know, about eight years now. What was like the coolest place you've been so far touring? <laughs> um, I love Japan. I think Japan is one of my favorite spots, uh, Tokyo specifically. Um, I mean, one, it's just an awesome town and two, there's a different appreciation for that style of jazz out there. They're like really huge fans of the music. Like you go to you go to Japan and everybody that's in the audience, they know all the band members' names, like all the current band members' names. It's not just the Count Basie Orchestra brand, like they'll actually research. When I first went there in 2008, it was like, oh, okay, you're the new trumpet player. You went to Michigan State University. You did this, you did this. They actually really, really care about the music. So that was uh, probably my best experience. I mean, for me, early on, I really struggled with my ear. Um, I actually had like a terrible ear. I was borderline tone deaf. Um, but it was always something I really wanted to get better at. So initially, all my musical training was written. I was really into classical music, really into marching band, really into symphonic band. And so a lot of how I learned how to play was through reading music and I played in a lot of orchestras. But then over time, I just kept challenging myself to develop my ear. So now as I'm teaching students, I believe that they should all be equally like, they should all be equally trained between knowing how to read music, knowing how to write music, being able to play music by ear, as well as understanding music theory. I try to teach it from all sides because you know, I know some great musicians who can't read anything at all, but they have these amazing ears and they come up with all these unique sounds. Then I know some other musicians who can read anything you put in front of them, but can't hear anything at all. My goal is to kind of make a marriage, you know, between that. So we have these perfect musicians that can hear anything as well as read anything. I think that's really important. Like, for me, I mean, you know, I was that kid that was in church choir that used to be told, like, not to sing. Because, like, somebody would sing a note back and say, okay, la... You're supposed to sing that note. And I say, lah, lah, lah. I couldn't, I was totally toned up. I couldn't hear it. So it took me a long time to get to the point where I could hear somebody play a note and then know what it was and know what to do with it. Um, so I work with students a lot on, on what we call ear training, which is just getting the students to recognize pitches and then figure out where they are in their instrument and figure out what those sounds are. So 
so that it's not just like some note that's on a line. They see that note, but then they also know what it sounds like as well as how to read it. So right now I'm the director of jazz studies at a University of Utah in Salt Lake City, Utah. For about three years, I was uh, an adjunct faculty member at Ohio State University. So I was, you know, kind of doing the year to year contract thing, teaching out there. And uh, I started noticing that a lot, uh, a lot of openings around the country were coming up. And so I was kind of studying the different postings and I noticed that a director of jazz studies position was open where they required a master's degree. And so I applied for that and about 13 other jobs and uh, ended up being a top three finalist for, uh, in three schools. Ultimately ended up going out to Salt Lake City, interviewed there, it went really well. I was really impressed with their facilities. Uh, it's a tenure track position and decided to go there. They made me an offer and uh, ended up out there. So I've been there for one year now and uh, it's great developing the curriculum there, uh, running the jazz ensemble, also uh, teaching private lessons, teaching composition, running a graduate program. So it's a lot of work and it's a lot different than the performance side of my life, but it's really rewarding because I can kind of guide these students in the right direction and make sure that they have like a really complete education. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I have a group named the, uh, I have a band named the Chris Johnson Group. And uh, so far we put out one album uh, called Odd Expressions. We also have an online release on SoundCloud called Journey Through a Dream. And right now we've actually recorded six songs uh, from an upcoming album called The Unpaved Road. And we're going back in the studio in August to finish that up. So that's actually really exciting. It's a, it's a 10 piece group uh, doing all original music. So we have vocals, guitar, two keyboard players, uh, trumpet, saxophone, percussion, uh, marimba, bass drums. I mean, it's, it's a really fun group. And yeah, so the, the album should be coming out around September, October and uh, finishing up early August. Yeah, definitely. And you know, and honestly, that's kind of at the center of how I teach, is that to me, we have to look at it as any of these styles of music that we're talking about and dealing with may have influenced what came next, but this whole kind of history book mindset that we get into right now of, oh, we can only study this one period, or oh, we can only study classical music, we can only study the music of this one person, this is not really realistic. And it's also kind of artistically stifling, in my opinion. Really what we need to do is study as much art as possible, regardless of genre, and really study individual artists and just pick up on things that we might want to use for our own personal self-expression. And sometimes we get out of that, and I don't know why we do that. In classical music, that happened, that's been happening for years um, in terms of education. Same thing has happened with jazz for many years is that we get into this you know, history mode of all we can do is play this one style. I think it's important to know a, a bunch of different styles and it's important to study that, but we can't get stuck and think that you can only play music in one way. Because imagine if that had happened with hip hop or with rock and roll or with Motown if everybody had just stayed in, in, in that one lane and never moved things forward. Right, so to me, uh, I try to focus on universal concepts. So to me, a universal concept is knowing how to read music. A universal concept is understanding theory, understanding the way that music is put together and how the scales and the chords interact and what voice leading is. Um, Another universal concept is technique, being able to get around your instrument and know your instrument inside and out. Uh, being able to, to have good ears, be able to hear music and hear the way that music moves. All that's essential. And you could take all of those skills and apply it to whatever, school, uh, whatever style of music you want to.